Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh everyone. This is Harun. Welcome back. In this video, I want to touch upon a lengthy hadith and hone in on a particular aspect of the hadith. It's a famous hadith. It basically narrates how the Prophet, peace be upon him, first received revelation. And we know the story in some detail that when he received revelation, he was visibly shaken upon meeting the angel Gabriel, Jibreel alayhi salatu salam. And then he made his way down to his comforting, loving wife, Khadija. May Allah be pleased with her. And when he came home, he was visibly shaken. She understood that some fateful event had transpired with her husband. So immediately she covered him and he began to talk about how he feared for his life and feared for his safety. What's really interesting is the words that she said to him to comfort comfort her husband and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when he was talking about his fear, she said, Kalla, wallahi ma Allah abadan. Allah will never forsake you. Allah will never leave you behind. And then she explains why that is the case. Innaka la rahim that you bring people together. You make sure people maintain their relationship with their kith and their kin. So this is something that you do for people and you bring people together. So why would God ever leave you? And he says, وَتَحْمِلُ kal وَتَكْسِبُ madum That you lift the burdens of people. You help people with things that they find burdensome. You help people get things that they've lost. Those people who are destitute. Those people who are in need. In other words, you serve society. Your entire existence, your entire life, O Prophet, even before you became a Prophet, was one of service to society. And this really captures what the Prophet was about and what the Muslim community is about, which is about looking after the weak in society, the disenfranchised in society. So she reminds her husband that your entire life is to bring people together. This is what Muslims always do. It's about bringing families together. It's about bringing communities together. One of my teachers, whenever people would come to him for uh, dispute resolution, uh, whether it's between a husband and wife or between brothers or sisters or uncles and aunties, what he would be most interested in is about bringing people together. Not so much in trying to work out who's at fault and whose ego needs massaging, but rather to bring people together because this is what the Prophet was all about. But also the Prophet was about being concerned about those who are less fortunate in society. So we live in a world where we have people with haves and have-nots, people who struggle with the cost of living crisis, for example, people who struggle to make ends meet. And the Prophet would have been really concerned about these people. Then she continues as well and she says, وَتَقِ ضَيْف that you also honor your guests, which is something that's really important in our society, which is that we look after our guests, not because we want something from them, but purely this is the hospitality that Islam teaches us to share with other people, that when guests enter our homes or people come to our communities or our towns and our cities, that we honor them, we treat them well, we feed them, we make it as comfortable as possible for them. And we know that when guests come to our home, it's not just a person or a family coming to our house, but it's also blessings and that enter our homes as well. And then she says, that you also help those people who are afflicted by calamity, people who have um, been at the receiving end of some disaster or they've suffered some sort of family loss or financial loss, and you're there at the forefront of helping those people. So she said, look, God will never forsake you. Allah will never leave you because your entire life, and of course, we know from his life afterwards, after receiving revelation, this is what he was about. This is what the Muslims were always about, which is about serving humanity, which is about serving society, because that's where God's help comes. So in other words, by serving God's creation, God helps us. Right in a society which is radically um, shifted towards selfishness, it's all about my needs, it's all about my desires. 
The Prophet in Islam is teaching us, no, it's about selflessness. It's about sacrificing your needs to help others. So this is something that we should try and bring into our lives because our ultimate happiness lies in these acts of generosity, these acts of kindness towards fellow human beings, especially those who are less fortunate in society. Let's let us in our society, in our communities, become those who are at the forefront of looking after others in our communities. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.